This is the Music History Today podcast for October 10th. On today's show, Bonnie and Clyde is released and two classic musicals premiere on Broadway. First up, though, on this date in 1902, Orville Gibson founded the Gibson Mandolin Guitar Manufacturing Company Limited. In 1965, the Supremes performed on the Ed Sullivan TV show. In 1968, George Harrison formed Sing Song Limited. In 1970, British rock newspaper Sounds was published for the first time. And on that same day, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, clapped back at then Vice President. President Spiro Agnew, who complained in order to appeal to conservative voters that radio stations were playing too many songs about drugs. Quote, if we really want to do something about drugs, let's do something about life. The songwriters are trying to help us understand our plight and deal with it. It's about the only leadership we're getting. They're not really urging you to adopt a heroin distribution program, Mr. Vice President, end quote. And that is remarkable when you consider that that came from a federal government to a federal officer of the government, that being the vice president, no less. By the way, just for the record, Spiro Agnew resigned as vice president in 1973 due to a corruption investigation and a charge of tax evasion. Meanwhile, in 1972, speaking of music and politics, James Brown met with then-President Richard Nixon at the White House and endorsed Nixon for president during his re-election campaign, which made Brown's fans in the black community very, very unhappy. Two years later, of course, Richard Nixon would also resign the presidency due to the Watergate scandal. I'm sensing a trend here. In 1975, the film Listomania, co-starring Roger Daltrey of The Who, premiered in movie theaters. In 1978, at an Aerosmith concert in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, someone threw an M80 firecracker on stage, which exploded, injuring Steven Tyler and Joe Perry. Also in 1978, the British music magazine Smash Hits was published for the first time. In 1992, Garth Brooks debuted at number one on the Billboard Albums chart with the album The Chase. Also in 1992, Slash of Guns N' Roses married model Renee Saran. In 2001, U2 live-streamed their concert in Indiana on their website U2.com, becoming one of the first major musical acts to do that. In 2010, singer and actress Alexa Vega married movie producer Sean Covell. Also in 2010, Crystal Bauer Sox from American Idol fame married musician Brian Walker. In 2012, the TV show about the country music industry, Nashville, premiered. In 2014, the film about a jazz drummer trying to make it through a school program, Whiplash, premiered in movie theaters. Fun fact for you, J.K. Simmons, who played teacher Terrence Fletcher in the movie, won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role. In classical music, in 1774, composer Antonio Salieri married his wife, Therese Helferstorfer. In 1919, the Richard Strauss opera, The Woman Without a Shadow, premiered, and in 1938, Dmitry Shostakovich premiered his first string quartet. In theater, in 1935, the musical Porgy and Bess by George Gershwin opened on Broadway. In 1947, the musical Allegro by Rodgers and Hammerstein opened on Broadway. In 1961, the musical Milk and Honey opened on Broadway. In 1969, Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice's Jesus Christ Superstar soundtrack album was recorded. We discuss the recording of that soundtrack and the ramifications thereof on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which is already dropped on this channel. By the time you're hearing this, please like, subscribe, and do all the algorithmic stuff because technology implores you to do that. Actually, I do. Anyway, moving on. In 1995, the Broadway show Garden District opened, and in 1996, the Broadway show Sex and Longing opened. In award ceremonies that were held on October 10th, 
In 1971, Charlie Pride was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. In 1977, Ronnie Millsap was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. In 1979, Fleetwood Mac received their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1983, Alabama was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. And in 1988, Katie Oslin was among the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. Albums that were released on October 10th include in 1960 when Brenda Lee released This Is Brenda. In 1964, the Ventures released Walk Don't Run Volume 2. In 1966, Simon and Garfunkel released Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. Also on that same exact day, the Monkees released their self-titled album. In 1967, Elvis Presley released Clam Bake. In 1969, King Crimson released what many consider to be the first progressive rock album in the court of the Crimson King. In 1969, same exact day, Frank Zappa released Hot Rats and the Kinks released Arthur or The Decline and Fall of the British Empire. In 1970, Pink Floyd released Adam Hart, Mother, and the Ventures released their 10th anniversary album. In 1973, Renaissance released Ashes Are Burning. In 1975, Deep Purple released Come Taste the Band. In 1977, The Easy Beats released The Shame Just Drained. In 1980, Bruce Springsteen released The River. Manfred Mann's Earth Band released Chance. And Thin Lizzy released Chinatown. In 1981, UB40 released Present Arms in Dub. In 1983, Culture Club released Color by Numbers. In 1985, Triumph released Stages. In 1986, John Farnham released Whispering Jack. In 1988, the John Lennon Estate released Imagine John Lennon, and U2 released Rattle and Hum. In 1989, Atlanta Rhythm Section released Truth in a Structured Form. The Indigo Girls released Strange Fire. And George Harrison released The Best of Dark Horse, 1976 to 1989. In 1990, Mexican singer Thalia released her self-titled debut album. In 1992, The Jesus Lizard released Liar. In 1994, Suede released Dog's Man Star and Annihilator released King of the Kill. In 1995, No Doubt released their popular album Tragic Kingdom and Jack Bruce released Monk Jack with the Cowboy Junkies releasing 200 More Miles live performances 1985 to 1994. Idol Winds released Dumb, Gifted, and Beautiful. Janet Jackson released Design of a Decade, 1986 to 1996. Fleawood Mac released Time. And Peter Frampton released Frampton Comes Alive 2. In 1997, Blackmail released their self-titled album. In 2000, The Tubes released Tubes World Tour 2001. The Church released Triple Set and Catch-22 released Alone in a Crowd. In 2002, TLC released the album 3D, which was their last one with Lisa Left Eye Lopez, who passed away in a car accident earlier in the year. In 2006, Jimmy Buffett released Take the Weather With You. Rod Stewart released Still the Same, Greatest Rock Classics of Our Time. Sting released Songs from the Labyrinth. And James Taylor put out a Christmas album because we're getting close to that time of the year. He put out James Taylor at Christmas. In 2007, Radiohead released their album In Rainbows for free and then let people decide how much money, if any, they wanted to pay for it. Turns out a lot of people were actually willing to pay for a free album, which is good to see. Support your local artists. And in 2011, Peter Gabriel released New Blood. Singles that were released in the UK on October 10th include in 1980 when the Cars released Touch and Go. In America, in 1966, the Beach Boys released Good Vibrations, a classic. In 1972, the Hollies released Long Dark Road. 
1978, The Cars released My Best Friend's Girl. In 1980, Manfred Mann's Earth Band released For You. In 1988, The Moody Blues released No More Lies. In 2002, Jay-Z with Beyonce released the song O3, Bonnie and Clyde. In 2011, Lana Del Rey officially released her single Video Games after it was first released to the internet on May 5th of that year. And in 2012, Blondie did not just a twofer, they did a threefer. They released Dead Air, Bride of Infinity, and Rock On. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 10th include jazz great Thelonious Monk, classical composer Giuseppe Verdi, singer Midge Ure, David Lee Roth of Van Halen, Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm, country music singer Tanya Tucker, Chris Lowe of the Pet Shop Boys, singer Maya, Rapper DDG, singer Yang Yang of SM Rookies, Bay Susie of Miss A, singer Lali Esposito, Una Healy of the Saturdays, singer Marina Diamandis, Vinny Tatanelli of Nine Days, Mike Malinin of the Goo Goo Dolls, Martin Kemp of Spandau Ballet, folk music singer John Prine. Alan Cartwright of Procol Harum, Jerry LaCroix of Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Dennis D.L. of The Honeycombs, composer extraordinaire Mr. Ennio Morricone, Louis Gottlieb of The Limelighters, singer Ivory Joe Hunter, singer and actor extraordinaire Mr. Ben Vereen, singer Crystal Waters, singer Kirsty McCall, Cyril Neville of the Neville Brothers, composer Johnny Green, Ed Volker of the Radiators, James Fernley of the Pogues, singer Kevin Page, singer Gabriella Silmi, and Dean Rowland of Collective Soul. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 10th include composer Sebastian Nupfer, who passed away in 1676 at the age of 43. Organist Jacobus Noseman passed away in 1745 at the age of 52. Organist Pierre-Louis Couperin passed away in 1789 at the age of 34. Composer Jacob Joseph Balthazar Martin passed away in 1836 at the age of 61. Composer Carl Toecci passed away in 1843 at the age of 75. Composer Mikhail Vilgorsky passed away in 1856 at the age of 67. Composer Ignacy Dobrinsky passed away in 1867 at the age of 60. Composer Adolf von Hunselt passed away in 1889 at the age of 75. The person who, according to legend, inspired the name of the Beatles song Eleanor Rigby, Miss Eleanor Rigby, passed away in 1939 at the age of 44. Singer Edith Piaf passed away from liver cancer in 1963 at the age of 47. Composer Bedrick Havlick passed away in 1964 at the age of 71. The orchestra leader for the Julius La Rosa show, Mr. Russ Case, passed away in 1964 at the age of 52. Pianist Heinrich Newhouse passed away in 1964 at the age of 76. Composer Irvin Major passed away in 1967 at the age of 66. Jazz singer Connie Boswell passed away in 1976 at the age of 68. Band leader Ralph Martieri passed away in 1978 at the age of 64. The conductor of the Detroit Symphony from 1951 to 1962, Mr. Paul Perre, passed away in 1979 at the age of 93. Pianist Catherine Collard passed away from cancer in 1993 at the age of 46. The conductor of the Westminster Cathedral Master of the Music, George Malcolm passed away in 1997 at the age of 80. 
Composer Farrakh Farkas passed away in 2000 at the age of 94. Stephen Gately of the group Boyzone passed away from heart issues in 2009 at the age of 33. Singer Solomon Burke passed away from pulmonary embolism in 2010 at the age of 70. Opera legend Dame Joan Sutherland passed away in 2010 at the age of 83. Janice Kunemund of the group Vixen passed away from cancer in 2013 at the age of 59. Country music singer Cal Smith passed away in 2013 at the age of 81. Pianist Curtis Curtis Smith passed away in 2014 at the age of 73. The conductor of the Croatian Baroque Ensemble from 1999 to 2015, Sasa Britvic, passed away in 2015 at the age of 51. Rapper Toker passed away in 2018 at the age of 51. Composer Leon Berriotti passed away in 2020 at the age of 90. Composer Leon Shidlowski passed away in 2022 at the age of 91. And country music singer Anita Kerr passed away in 2022 at the age of 94. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 11th when in 1992, Cardi B was born. <laughs> 